Hi there. I'm going to teach you how to make these amazing First of all, you need a plastic bottle and a sharpie, and you draw a line around the bottom of the bottle. You see there's like a join, you can see where you draw out. Then remove the label. Next, you need to get a piece of paper and cut a small strip. It's got to be long enough to go around the bottle's circumference. You see where you've drawn the line around the bottle, the bottom of the bottle? Make a mark which is where there's a seam in the bottle side. If you look at the side, you'll see a seam. Then line up the strip of paper very carefully all the way around the circumference of the bottle. So this is just to find out exactly how how big the, the bottle is around exactly. So then you can make your cuts evenly around. There I snip off the bit at the end. So now the paper is exactly the same size as the bottle is around. Now if you fold it in half half again and half again, that's usually about how many folds you need. Then you can use that to mark off the even, even cuts for the sails of your windmill. So make a little sharpie mark where each fold is because it's quite hard to see the folds once you open the paper out flat again. And now you can use that to start from your mark that you've already made on the bottle. You can use this piece of paper as a guide to mark on the bottle where you're going to cut the slits, which will eventually become the sails of the windmill. There you go. And then you need to do the same at the top of the bottle. Again, you make a dark mark, or not a strong mark, where the seam on the plastic is. Use that as a starting point, and again, make marks all the way around like you did at the bottom of the bottle. And then next, you're going to need to get a ruler and join the dots at the top of the bottom with some nice careful straight lines. It's quite tricky to do this because the bottle wants to roll all the time. So you kind of have to sort of squeeze the ruler into the bottle so that it doesn't move. There you go. Next you're going to cut off the very bottom of the bottle along the line that you've already drawn with a box cutter or a standing knife or something. And then you're going to need scissors to cut up along the lines that you've drawn up the height along the length of the bottle, making sure to stop very carefully at the top of where that line is that you've drawn. And now you'll see what all the what will become the sails. Now you've got to fold them very carefully. The trick is as you as you to fold each strip down, fold it over at about 45 degrees and you can use the, the line at the top of the bottle as a place to line up the side of each strip. If you're a little bit off it, it's not actually the end of the world. And then I tend to use pliers like these to just go back over the folds and make them nice and tight. Usually you need to do a few little adjustments with your hand to just sort of make them even. If you hold it up to your eyes, it will put it on a flat surface. You can see where the one is slightly too twisted up or twisted in. Next thing to do is make a hole in the middle of the base of the bottle. So I tend to use a soldering iron, but you can do it with uh, by heating at the end of a knitting needle or something. Um, and it needs to be big enough that the that it can spin around the spindle. The next job is to make holes in three lids. Now the tricky part for this is that two of the lids, the holes need to be very quite small and they need to be very snug as you'll see in the video. They need to fit the pea stick very snugly so that the pea stick can't turn inside them. The third one you need to make a larger hole in so that it, the pin, it can spin around the pea stick. So you're making two small holes, two bottle caps with small holes, two bottle cap, one bottle cap with a large hole. So you see the first one I'm making here is a small hole, so it's a nice tight snug fit. There's two with snug small holes. And then this third one, when you put the soldering iron in, whatever you're using, 
you're probably best to spin it round a little bit, push it outwards so that you gradually make the hole larger and then you can see it will spin freely. On the Next make some slits up the sides of the small bottom piece from the bottle so that it will be squeezed together and fit into the other section when you want to assemble the windmill. And now it's time to paint. The great thing about painting a windmill is you don't have to do it carefully because once it's spinning round all you see is a blur of colour anyway and when it's still it looks pretty much beautiful whatever you do so just think about making sure there's a reasonable coverage not too many bits where it's clear um, and just choose colours that look good together paint everywhere paint the spindles paint the um, sails, paint the top part which is where the lid is and paint the bottom and then you can see it fits the base of the bottle into the top of the bottle and that's that's the body of the windmill. Now you see if you, you can use the soldering iron and push through the two layers so you're pushing through the top part of the, the bottle and the, the bottom part which is snugly tucked inside and by doing this you effectively seal and join strongly the two sections together. I did try doing it with super glue, but um, super glue just gets everywhere, and I think this will be more durable in the long run. There we go, that's the body part made. Now you've got to assemble the whole thing together. So usually I start with a fairly long section of pea stick, um, make sure that. I don't have enough because it's difficult to judge by eye. And now you see where the two bottle caps with the smaller holes come in useful. So one goes at the front of the windmill, put the fit the tighter and snugger the fit the better. And then the other one slides up from the bottom of the pea stick and goes behind the windmill effectively. But you have to make sure when you push up the pea stick that you leave enough of a gap so that the, the moving parts won't rub up against and um, which will slow down and, and impede the rotation of the windmill in the wind. So you can just, but it's really easy to adjust, you can just fiddle about with it like you can see I'm doing in the video, you can just fiddle about with it until it until it spins nice and freely and once you actually put it up on the on a, on a fence or however you're going to put it up, wherever you're going to erect it, you can adjust it more then. I just snip off the piece stick with a pair of pliers or, a, or you can cut it with a standing knife if you want. And now it's to now to put it up. Drill a hole, find a drill bit that's about the same size or slightly smaller than the pea stick, and then so the best of the hole is just a tiny bit smaller. Drill your hole, and then in the video, you, <laughs> I um, look as if I'm just pushing the pea stick into the hole, but in fact that doesn't really work. You have to get a rock or something or a hammer and just tap it gently just a little bit so that it stays in there so that it wedges tightly in the hole and that is the end. <laughs>